Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Organization Boot Camp Challenge Number Two, the Obstacle Course. Thanks so much for choosing to spend some of your Tuesday evening with me for this Challenge Number Two. So for those of you who are just jumping in for the first time, if you've never attended a webinar before or with us before, um, you have a little question pane on your navigation pane, so you can type in questions as you think of them. Please feel free to do that. I actually won't answer the questions until the end of the webinar, so I may answer your question as we go along, but I don't want you to forget it, so type it in, and then we'll just recap on it when we get to the end of the session. Um, excuse me. At the very end of the session, we'll have a Q&A, so if you think of something, Excuse me, and don't get a chance to write it down or type it in. Um, we do have that Q&A session at the end, so you can feel free to join us for that. I mean, after we get the challenge assignment um, this week, I do have a little bit of information. I got quite a few emails about Scrap Rack pages and how they work over the course of the week. So I do have a little bit of a presentation at that at the very end. So if you're interested in learning more about what the options are for storage pages with the Scrap Rack, I'll do that at the very end. So this week's winner. Uh, Jeanette Zacharias, Zacharias, I think, um, was our progress post winner um, this week. So great job, Jeanette. It looks like she just really got a lot of stuff done. So we will email you with your winning code. Um, so if you don't see it in the next 24 hours or so, feel, please feel free to email us. Sometimes uh, we have your access through Facebook, but we don't have your actual email address to get back hold of you. So if you don't hear from us, then um, please feel free to email us at customer service at thescrapwreck.com. And congratulations. Nice job. Just tons of work done this week. And some great progress posts by lots of gals. Looks like a lot of stuff really happened this week. So good for all of you. Um, one little tip from Sarah Burns about purging. And she's got a long post here. I'll let you read it if you feel so inclined. But what's really important was the two things. One that she just said, look, if I can't make a good, quick decision about where this belongs, then it should just be purged. And she said she hasn't regretted taking that um, method either. So a good point. If, you're, if, if you really don't know, just put it in the purge box. And second, what she did with her purge was compiled it into themes and with surprising friends and family who also scrap. Um, so she said she had some stuff from a cruise and a friend who just went on a cruise, and so she was able to sort of bring some joy to someone else with her leftover stuff. And this was um, even more apropos to me right now because we're coming up to the Christmas season. And um, I hate to bore you all with my own little personal stories, but I'm going to. So um, when I was a kid, we didn't have very much money. And the thing that I looked forward to every year, my favorite Christmas gift every year, was what my mom called the art box. And it was a simple brown cardboard box, nothing fancy, some old shipping box, right? It wasn't decorated, didn't have anything special. And inside it were all kinds of art supplies. And these are art supplies from, you know, 40 years ago, I guess. So we considered art supplies construction paper, paste, rubber cement, star stickers, that was about the only kind of sticker I ever got in there, maybe new crayons or new markers, a pair of scissors, maybe a hole punch. But it was kind of stuff that came from whatever the version of the dollar store was back then. But it was my favorite, favorite gift every year. So as you're going through your supplies, if there's a kid in your world, whether it's someone in your family or someone else, or maybe a kid that you just want to donate to. We have a place called the Toy Rescue Mission in Tacoma, and they take used toys and refurbish them, used games and refurbish them. But if you have a bunch of art supplies that you need to purge out, there is some child whose life you will, who you will totally delight by purging your art supplies and creating a little art box as a gift for someone, uh, for some kid who's crafty and maybe has parents who can't quite afford all that cool crafty stuff. So. There's my little story. So, and when you can make it more emotional and you can attach emotionally to things, it's easier to give them away. So especially if you have somewhere you can donate them to some kid who loves art but doesn't have the resources to have cool art supplies, um, that's going to make someone stay. All right, I'm done now with my little thing. All right, so let's get ready. How are we going to get ready? We're going to gather the things we need to complete this challenge. So with this challenge, you're going to need sorting templates. Maybe you use sorting templates to sort your paper. 
if you use boxes to sort your paper instead of templates, you're going to want to make those. And remember, we made those using our themes list. You're going to need some sort of organization tool, whether it's Ziploc bags or file folders, scrap rack pages, tote bins, drawers, whatever. Have a plan. So where will things go once they've been sorted, stored, cataloged? So in this situation, we're going to call that the organized only zone. We talked about it earlier. And then finally, your purge box. Da -na -na. So the purge box, which hopefully you started using last week to get rid of some of your things, the purge box should now become a permanent fixture in your craft area. And as you're going through things, and as you're scrapbooking or card making or rubber stamping or whatever it is that you love to do, as you come across things that you won't use anymore, as you look at things and go, ah, oh, do I really need that? And you're ready to put it in your purge box. Keep that purge box handy so that you can just throw it in there and move on. All right, so sorting templates, if you didn't make them last week, you want to make them this week, you're going to create them out of 12 by 18 paper if possible. Now, I um, construction paper is 12 by 18, but it's kind of expensive. So I just used a 12 by 18 tablet that I bought from the dollar store. So I got 25 sheets or whatever for a buck. I think I used two of them. I bought two of them. I probably only used one. But so that works great, and it's an inexpensive way to go. And it allows you to write the main category um, on the top left corner and then list the subcategories underneath. So if you're doing themes B, you might have the themes B and then baby beach birthday written down the side. And that's just going to help guide you through the process of where to sort those things as you go through step by step. So here's kind of what that might look like. So you can see. The image on the right side are the first sorting templates I ever used. And I made them on 12 by 12 paper. And it didn't work so great because once you put something that's 12 by 12 on top of some, a piece of 12 by 12 paper, you can't see it anymore. So the other ones are the ones I made from the dollar store paper. On the left side, so you see letters, numbers, and punctuation marks. And then there's an example of a color one. I put reds and pinks together and spring, and then the different um, holidays that were in spring. So you'll have enough sorting templates to get you through letters, numbers, and punctuation marks, however many colors of the rainbow you're going to break it down into, the holidays or the calendar year, and then finally your theme section. Get set. Spread your sorting templates out across the floor, over the furniture, on the countertops, wherever you have room. So this is an actual picture from somebody taking a previous challenge, sorting her rainbow just on her dining room table. But you can see how she's just got that rainbow flowing around the table there. And easy because everything's kind of condensed down to stand in one spot and reach out and get those colored items in the right rainbow section. And I know some of you are gasping right now thinking, oh my gosh, look, she's got her ribbon and her flowers and her eyelets all together in the same place. But it's so much easier to craft when you're doing things by color rather than by item type. So some of you are thinking, how can I do that? How can I mix my eyelets, my glitter, my beads, my brads all together? It just, just um, know that once you get it done, you're not only are you going to use more of those colors, you're going to use more of those products, but you're going to become a better designer because you're going to start thinking in terms of color instead of thinking in terms of item because you're going to be so much more exposed every time you go to craft. So go. Now what do you do? You're going to sort one container or less at a time. Um, once it's sorted, you're going to group the items in each category by size. You're going to put them into storage pages, Ziploc bags, file folders, whatever they are. But the reason it's important to sort by size is obviously if you're using a scrap rack and you're using our storage pages, you want to fill pages most economically. So you want to have all your small stuff on one page and all your medium and all your large, et cetera. But even if you're using file folders or Ziploc bags or totes or whatever it is, you want to make sure that you sort by size so the small stuff goes in the front. So when you open that file folder or you look in that Ziploc bag, you get a good visual of what's in there, smallest to largest. So you'll have the most visibility, smallest to largest. And you'll also have the most access in something like a file folder or a Ziploc bag would be able to reach in and grab it a lot e more easily. So smallest stuff goes in the front. Then you're going to put each storage page, bag, or file folder into the appropriate section of your four-section system, and then start your next container. So the very first thing we talked about was sort just one container or less at a time. It's really important to prevent yourself from getting overwhelmed 
by trying to sort too much at once. So when you sort small amounts, you get like smaller tasks done and they turn into these large tasks versus creating this huge mess and then not having time to put it all away and bunching it all back up again. I think we're actually going to, I think it's going to pop up again for us in this presentation as well. So here's what your sections might look like, right? So section one, alphanumeric. So these are all the different things. Um, one of the pictures is on here kind of sideways. It looks like that alphabet, the triple play. But um, anything that's alphanumeric and not theme specific is going to go in this category. So you see there's all kinds of different things in there, buttons and chipboard and glitter stickers and all kinds of stuff. And then in the upper right side, there's a picture of Titletopia, which is a product that's made by um, Creative Memories. So when I think about the alphanumeric section, I think of it as anything that has to do with writing. So that means any kind of letter, font, whatever, but it also means anything that I would use to build a tag, title, or journaling block. And so this title topia, obviously that's a template for building titles. So if you have this little title topia, and for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a, it's a template for building titles, and it's very small, thin plastic, and it comes in this um, envelope, which is what you're seeing in that picture. It's like a, a heavy card stock envelope. Well, I just took one of the ring binder insert strips, which is the little thing kind of hard to see, I guess, in the picture, the little yellow package that has like four bands, clear and white bands coming off of it. And so if you don't know what those are, those are just a plastic strip, and it has a self-adhesive tab down the side of it. And you pull the self the cover off the self-adhesive tab, and you can stick it on anything, and it makes that thing three-hole punched. So I used it, and there's a video on our website about the ring binder and search strip and how it works. And I'll make sure and send out a... Um, um, let me write this down. I'll send out a link to it and to the video in the email that goes out tomorrow about the session tonight so that you can watch it. And if you don't have no idea what I'm talking about because I sound like a crazy person, you can um, go and watch it. But the little ring binder internships will stick on anything. But that allowed me to take that title topia and put it right in the alphanumeric section of my scrap rack. So now when I'm building a tag or title, I can, and I go to that alphanumeric section, there the title topia thing is. Or if I just think, oh, this would be a good time to use title topia, I know exactly where to go to get it. So the way I put that ring binder strip on there allows me to open the envelope without taking it off the three ring section. So I can just take out the template, use it, and then put it right back in the envelope. But I know where it is, um, and it pops up for me also when I'm doing things where it might come in useful. So again, anything that's alphanumeric and not being specific, um, is going to belong in this first section, alphanumeric. Your second section is themed. And now these pockets are really lightly loaded in these pages um, just because we use them for when we travel. So we don't put a lot of stuff in there. So there's just one thing in each pocket, but it will give you a good idea. So, you know, we have cocktail hour in the upper left-hand corner, and then in the center is the um, handyman, Mr. Fix-It stuff. And then the vacation or travel section is the last one. But you can see just grouping whole groups of products together, different kinds of stickers. You can see there's some brads and some different embellishments in there. But when you go to work on one of those themes, everything's together in one place there. Calendar and season. So again, different holidays all grouped together. So you see Fourth of July and Christmas and Thanksgiving. And then just kind of that generic spring um, stuff so that you have when you go to work on those Easter pages or Mother's Day pages or whatever it is products that you might be able to use on anything in that theme or category are going to be right there as well so holiday stuff grouped together and then general seasonal stuff grouped together as well all the stuff that ties together is right there at your fingertips the rainbow section obviously um, we kind of already talked about that rainbow and putting all those different things together, but here's some examples of what that might look like. So whether it's ribbons or fibers or tags or tiles or any of that kind of stuff, everything's together just grouped by color. Now don't forget to work your scraps in at this point, right? So um, when you think about scraps, you need to choose your minimum size. And I'm going to re really recommend that your minimum size is 6 by 6. So when you finish a project, you get rid of, put it in your perch box, the recycle box, the garbage, whatever you do, any scrap that's not at least six by six. 
if you think about it, and for some of you I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can use a two by two scrap, or I might use a you know, two by three scrap or whatever. But if you think about it, the more stuff you have to dig and search through when you need something, the harder it is to find what you need, and the longer it takes, and the more frustrating it becomes. So when we talk about paper specifically, those scraps, I bet if I went into all your scrapbook rooms, all of you have enough paper that if you scrapbook every day for the rest of your life, you'd never run out of paper. You probably also have enough paper, if I know most of you paper junkies out there, again, if I could see you raising your hand, you probably have enough paper that you could throw away half of your paper and still have enough paper to scrapbook with for the rest of your life. So don't get bogged down in the scraps. You have plenty of beautiful paper screaming to be used that you'll never find and never use if you're spending all your time digging and searching through scraps. So use it. Don't lose it. How about that? All right. There's those scraps right there. So in this situation, there's some smaller scraps. I used to always keep two by three scraps, and then anything, it had to be at least two by three to meet my minimum. And it's just been recently, like in the last six weeks, that I started really reevaluating that and thinking through the six by six thing. So truthfully, as I go through and purge the next time I'm crafting, I'm going to be able to get rid of all those scraps that are small, and I'm going to use four by four pages. Um, and I'm going to use the double extra long pages, and that's it. I'm not going to need to keep any of these small scraps. Okay, so after you're done sorting, that's when you're going to add your tags or labels. So depending on what type of tool you're using, so with the scrap rack we use dividers, and then the, we have the stick-on tabs also. So you can see in the picture on the um, right side, the top tab, that, the divider tab that's kind of pulled back would be the sports tab. And then behind it, I just use the self-stick tabs from Office Depot. We sell them on our website, but they're from Office Depot. And I stuck them just on the side of my storage pages and labeled baseball, basketball, football, soccer, tennis, whatever it is, so that I could get to sports easily, and then I could get, using those tabs, I could get to whatever main category in sports I wanted to get to easily. So you can see in the picture on the left, um, you can see that there are four of those little self-adhesive tabs sitting on the side there. And I just stuck them right onto my um, storage pages, and it was a really easy way to tag stuff. Now, if you're using file folders, you can just use the labels on the file folders. Ziploc bags, I would recommend just using the sticky, a sticky label from, like, file folders. It's going to stick on that plastic really nicely. If you're using totes or bins, you just want to get that label out on the front of it so that um, – it's really easy to find that way as well. So after you're done sorting everything, that's when you want to add the label. So in the process of getting there, I would really recommend you just use sticky notes to get yourself going and, and label things with sticky notes because you're going to find that there are things that you maybe thought you had a lot of stuff for that you didn't have much stuff for or things that you thought you wouldn't have a whole category of but you end up with lots of stuff for it. So sticky notes work great for that. Now, Post-it also came out with, someone reminded me of this just last week, I think, of a file tab um, sticky note. So if you want to use that on your file folders or on the edges of your um, storage pages, that would work as well. I haven't, I don't know how, dur how long those will actually last on storage pages, but I do use sticky notes in my holding album, and they've been there for quite a while, so I think they're going to stick just fine in that situation. So if you're using a scrap rack, once it's all done with everything sort of mixed in, this is what it will look like. So you can kind of see it's open there to the travel section, but you can kind of get an eye there on how the colors transition through the back or whatever. But with this system, then you're just able to flip through to find exactly what you need as you go through that scrap rack. So um, we, I started talking earlier about just doing one small container at a time. And just, just a reminder that what you, you don't want to get overwhelmed. So when you just do one small container at a time, and in some cases I recommend just a handful or two handfuls of product at a time, if you only have a half an hour, grab two, a handful of product, sort it, grab a second handful, sort it, and then put it all away in the section. And then it's done, and your little area is cleaned up. And if you have a little bit more time, do a little bit more. But don't get everything spread out and into a big mess because you, if you run out of time to put it all away, then it's all going to get mixed up again. You're going to have to start over, and you're going to get overwhelmed. We've all done it. We started some big project, run out of time, and ended up having to close the office door 
or just put everything in a box and throw it in the closet or whatever so we can get back to it. And so not only does it waste the time that you spent doing it, but your brain says, hey, that didn't work. And so um, it, you end up trying to figure a new thing out, and it really wasn't that it didn't work or wasn't going to work. It was just more that um, you ran out of time and had to stuff it in the closet. So just make sure that you're working in a range that you can finish in the allotted time, and that's going to really help you prevent getting overwhelmed. Okay, so some things that are going to present some challenges for you as you start to organize them. These bulky embellishments, what do you do with them? So the best way to store these kinds of items is in small Ziploc bags. They're inexpensive, they're reusable, they're lightweight, they're easy to use. So here's an example. I got these really cute little jars of buttons. Actually, one of, our, one of my girlfriends brought them to me because she thought they're so cute and they would match my scrapbook room perfectly, which they do. However, they're in these little cylindrical jars, which means I have to store them on a shelf or in a tote or in a drawer or somewhere where I can't see them and I can't get to them and they're not in my rainbow section with all my other stuff. So all I did was dump out the, be the buttons and I sorted them by size, so bigger ones and smaller ones. And I even pulled the ribbon out of the lid and saved the little lid for the jar in my um, rainbow section as well because I thought it was such a cute big chunky button there. So things that can go in Ziploc bags are going to be really easy in Ziploc bags. Now, what do you do with a Ziploc bag? You can drop it into your embellishment storage page or your Sweet 16 storage page if you're using a scrap rack. If you're using big Ziploc bags, then these little tiny Ziploc bags are going to drop, you know, they're small, they're going to be right kind of in that front row, so they're going to pop up for you. Um, if you're using file folders of some type, just get yourself a piece of chipboard and some repositionable glue dots and stick those little Ziploc bags on that piece of chipboard and then you can slide it right down into your file folder and when you need something that's in a little Ziploc bag, you can pull up that piece of chipboard and see all of that. Because the um, glue dot's repositionable, you can pull it right off that piece of chipboard, use what you need, and then stick it back on the dot and drop it back in the um, drawer. So there's a lot of good ways to deal with these things, um, depending on what sort of tool you're using. But you're going to be far happier if you're looking for something orange, if you can pull up that you know, orange page and see those buttons in the orange page or pull up that piece of chipboard and see the orange glitter and the orange buttons and the orange eyelets and everything all together in one place. You're going to use a lot more of what you've got. And who knows, you might embellish uh, orange brad by dipping it in orange glitter and giving yourself a sparkle brad, um, something you wouldn't have thought of doing before if your micro glitter was stored somewhere away from your um, from your brads, right? That thought might have never crossed your mind because you didn't see the two things together. So keeping those things together is going to inspire you to do more and different things. Ribbon and fiber. This is a regular question. People are like, I have thousands of spools of ribbon. And if you have thousands of spools of ribbon, I'm not going to recommend that you unwind all those spools of ribbon onto your ribbon and fiber storage system, right? What I am going to recommend is that you get your ribbon and fi your fiber. Well, fiber is usually loose. It's not usually in a spool. So fiber can go easily wrapped around a card and then put in whatever, um, you know, system you're using by color or by theme, depending on what it is. I just saw a whole bunch of back-to-school ribbons, you know, so I was able to wrap all of those around that ribbon and fiber card so I could see all of them at one time. So you're going to wrap the ones that are off the spool. The ones that are on the spool, you want to just get them in whatever you're using right now to organize them. So maybe it's a shallow tote. Now, if you have them in a great big deep tote, get, you need to get rid of that. Get a shallow single layer tote or single layer box. So something like a boot box works perfectly. And then line up those ribbons by the colors, by holidays, by themes, so that you're following along that same four section system. Um, so that if you think, oh, I would, I wonder if I have any Christmas ribbon, when you look in your ribbon box or your ribbon tote, all the Christmas ribbon is together with all the rest of the holiday and seasonal ribbons, and all the theme ribbons are in order alphabetically, and then all the colored ribbons are together. So stick with that same four section system, even if you're using some other type of tool to do it in. And then really evaluate, do you just buy ribbon because it's cheap and you can get lots of it? Or do you really use ribbon? And seeing your ribbon and organizing your ribbon that way is going to make you a more conscious consumer. So you might be somebody who uses tons of ribbon. I know some people who make 
mini books tie yards and yards and yards of ribbon and make it all fluffy on the binding of the rib of the mini book and it's adorable. They're great users of ribbon. But I know a lot of people who also just sort of collect ribbon. So seeing it all together and getting it organized is going to bring it to your conscious how much you actually use. It's going to make the ribbon more usable, obviously. And you'll know what you've got so you're not buying duplicates again. Same with everything. But for loose ribbon, wrap it around a 12 by 12 card. And we have the wrap around ribbon and fiber card. You can use that or you can cut yourself a 12 by 6 piece of chipboard and wrap it around that 12 by 6 piece of chipboard. And then it can just get added right into whatever storage system you're using. So it's right there with you. So especially when you're talking about, like, this, like I just mentioned, the back to school ribbons, there were six of them. So now they're all wrapped around that ribbon card and they're right in the back to school section. I can see them. They're going to pop up and I'm actually going to use them as opposed to just having them float around in some ribbon tote somewhere where I've completely forgotten that they even exist. Stickers and die cuts. Again, start with a small stack. So even if you have drawers full of stickers or ba baskets full of die cuts, just start with one small stack of them, sort it and put it away, and then go get another stack, right? So especially if stuff's already in the drawer, so you don't want it to get overwhelming. Just do as much as you can and then start again and do more. So that's one of the wonderful things about once you get on track with the four-section system, you can do a little bit of sorting at a time. Keep your sorting templates around. When you have an hour, do a little bit and then fold up the templates and put them back in your drawer or whatever. You have a little bit more time, you can start again. But don't try to do everything at once and then get overwhelmed. I can't say that often enough. It's the biggest challenge that people come up against when they're getting organized. They just try to do too much. It gets overwhelming. They don't see any benefit. And so they end up just saying, forget it. This is no fun. I'm out of here. So um, so don't let that happen to you. Work a little bit. See the benefit. Craft a little in the middle if you can so you can see that you really are making progress and able to use the things that you've been working on. And that will be more motivating than anything. So this week's challenge is to sort and store one container a day for four out of the next seven days. And when I say a container, that can be anything. It can be a shoebox. It could be a tin. It could be an entire huge Rubbermaid tote. Whatever container you think you have time to tackle, one container a day, every other day. So that's you're going to sort four containers this week. I don't care what size they are, just four containers. So when you're done with this week's sort, I want, to, I want you to post a picture of four empty containers out in the garage in the yard sale pile. Or if you've been reading my blog about getting organized for Christmas, for the holidays, I want to see those empty containers in the, in the Goodwill box or whatever out in your garage. So um, the perfect thing to do with them right now. And then I want you to sort four to six more inches of paper if you didn't get all your paper sorted. And then post your success on Facebook. So, all right. So I'm going to open the question and answer panel. And we'll get started on questions here. And then um, also, I guess I'm sorry. I did say I would do the scrap rack pages really quickly. So I just have them up in a couple these are all the different basic storage pages that we make at the Scrap Rack. And so what's unique about our pages? All these pages are 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So if you look at the picture in the upper left-hand corner of the super size single, you see that there's a 12 by 12 piece of paper in there, but there's still room all the way around the edge of it. So all of our stuff is a little bit bigger, so you have to fight with your products to get them in and out, excuse me, of your storage pages. And also you can see pretty clearly in that super size single picture that big crescent cut top cut out of the top. Well there's a flap that goes over the top of it, which is you can the flap is over the top in the second picture over where this little slam dunk um, laser uh, die cut is. So that one's closed. And in the super size single that flap is tucked behind the paper. So it makes it really easy for just working at home to pull things in and out of the pocket. There's a big variety of pockets. So the super size single, all the pocket names um, sort of indicate how many pockets are actually on that page. But and, and that comes, all of them come in 10 page packs. The super size single also comes in a 50 pack, kind of a value pack because people use it so much. And then the double extra long, the second one over, comes in a 10 pack and a 25 pack as well. 
Now the first seven of these designs, so the super single all the way through to the straight eight, are all the p different pages that are included when you buy one of the variety packs, so either the 35 pack or the 70 pack. And um, you can see also, so like the fantastic five page uh, works for five by seven photos, and the perfect six works for four by six photos. They also both work for tons of different kinds of embellishments and stuff. Um, of course, this straight eight, eight long narrow pockets, and then the sweet 16, I use it a lot for the small acrylic unmounted stamps, but it's also a great embellishment page. So those are the basic storage pages. And these are all on our website when you go into storage pages. They're all the basic storage pages. And then the specialty storage pages are more for your heavier, bulkier embellishments and those type of things. So the embellishment storage page is the first one. That's a double-sided page. And it does come with the mini Ziploc bags that go in each pocket. So it's a three-pack of pages, and that's 72 pockets. So you get 72 Ziploc bags. Ribbon and fiber cards, you saw those kind of earlier in the presentation. Side loader single is a 12 by 12, again, bigger than 12 by 12 pocket page that loads in and out the side. It's made out of the same heavier fabric as the other specialty storage pages, so some people just like that better um, for their paper, but it'll hold anywhere from 10 to 25 sheets of paper. The project planner is a double-sided page. It's designed for planning pro pages or projects out. So the back pocket is a big 12, a little over 12 by 12 pocket, and then it has three pockets on the front for pictures, memorabilia, journaling notes, those kind of things. And then finally, the cutting cartridge, um, an embellishment or supply cartridge so, page. So it holds, the pockets on that are, have a big thick gusset on it, so each pocket will hold two of whatever. So two Cricut cartridges, and two booklets, and um, overlays will fit in there. So you can literally get six cartridges Cricut cartridges, six booklets, and overlays on each side of the page. So you get 12 per page. And then I used this when I went on my little road trip this summer, and I took inks and chalks and pens and washi tape and really bulky things with me, things that I didn't have room for in the pockets of my travel pack. So I was able to sort of corral those other things in one of these pages, and it worked out really well as well. So a lot of different options there. All right, so I'm going to pop back here to the question pane. And we'll get started answering questions here. So um, da, 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 let me make it a little bit bigger. Um, so Mary Beth says there's a lot of hi. So hi to everybody who posted an early hi and welcome. Mary Beth Stoltz says, are the ring binder insert strips um, yours or can they be bought anywhere? They can be bought anywhere. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> They're, they're not ours. They're made by Cardinal Brands. They're a standard office supply. Unfortunately, they're not carried very, very standard. So the bigger office supplies like uh, Office Depot and Staples don't usually have them, although they carry other Cardinal brand products, and you might be able to order them on their website. Um, they are available on our website. They're $9 for a pack of 25. When they're the only thing you order, um, you, there's no shipping charge for them. Um, so we're just going to throw them in an, a regular envelope and put regular postage on them and mail them to you. So we don't charge you anything for that. So just kind of something to know as you're looking for those. Cheryl says, I use Stampin' Up! paper, ink, embellishments, etc., and would like to sort according to color mode. Rich Regal, Soft Settles, etc. How would I go about sorting by color for each mode? Exactly, just like you said. So you're going to put all your rich regals, soft settles together, whether you go light to dark or whatever. But you, the goal is to keep things you, together you would use together. And if that's how you use those products, then that's how you want to keep them together. So your rainbow section, if that's what you're using, is going to have, those are going to, those are going to be the colors of your rainbow, if that, um, if that makes sense to you, right? So, um, and a lot of close to my heart reps, I'm sorry, um, and I'm assuming Stampin' Up! is the same way, um, they keep a whole different sort of section just for Stampin' Up! or just for close to my heart because you want to keep your products that you're demoing to people and showing people as products that you sell separate from other products that you might use. But so if your rainbow is that Stampin' Up! rainbow or the Stampin' Up! colors, then that's going to be your rainbow section essentially or you're going to have your uh, rainbow section, and then in addition to, you're going to have your Stampin' Up! color section, and you'll know what those are. So if you're dealing with pink in your regular rainbow, and then you think, oh, you know what? 
Um, this would be, I could use a soft, subtle pink also. You know exactly where to go to do that. But you're keeping those things together. So you might have your regular rainbow and then your um, close to my heart or Stampin' Up! rainbow right behind it. But remember, you're on the right track. You want to keep things together, you would use together. So, um, so something like using, I'm not really sure what's included in those types of embellishments and stuff for Stampin' Up! I've seen Stampin' Up! stamps, but that's it. Um, so you may want to use something like a, the Project Planner page. And then also, some of you already know this, but in January, we have some new basic storage pages that are coming out that are double-sided pages. So it has a big 12 by 12 back pocket and then smaller pockets on the front, kind of designed exactly for this, um, for this use, actually. And so they're a little bit less expensive because they're just made of that basic storage uh, page fabric. They're not the heavier, um, bulkier, more, um, you know, more, um, what is it, firmer plastic as the others. Um, Rhonda says, if the photo of the scrap, let's see, in the photo of the scrap rack when purged, how many of the units were used? So I'm, I'm assuming, Rhonda, that you are talking about this picture right here. And that is two base units in that picture. So that's going to be two base units, and it's probably 14 spinders in that picture. Um, let's see. Jamie says, use from men's tool sections at Sears, Lowe's, the 9 um, the nine to 39 drawer containers that hold nuts and bolts. I think that's half a sentence. Um, Jamie, so maybe you can, so they're great. I think she's saying you could use the, the 9 to 39 drawers containers, but I'm not clear. Jane Updegraff says, what do you suggest for embossing powder? And I would suggest, well, it depends what you, how you stamp. But I would really suggest that you get your embossing powders, or at least some of them. We're going to talk a little bit. Do we talk about color next week? I don't think so, actually. We kind of kind of gloss over that a little bit because we only have three lessons. Um, but um, so with embossing powders and anything like that, glitter, that type of thing, I'd get it in the Ziploc bag and get it in the right color section. And you might only put a little bit, like half of what's in the jar. It depends how big your embossing powder jars are. Um, but the truth is, if it's right there and it's in front of you and it's going to pop up for you, then you're going to remember you have that embossing powder and then you're going to use it. But if your embossing powders are all in little jars in a box, in a drawer, in a cupboard that you can't see, you might not remember that you have the perfect color of turquoise or whatever it is um, to really make the crest of that wave pop or whatever, and then you won't use it. So if you can get some of that embossing powder and that glitter and anything like that right into your rainbow section using a Ziploc bag, you know, you can just write on the Ziploc bag what it is if you're worried that you might not remember, you know, write on it what it is and if there's more of it or where it's stored, just put it, use a Sharpie and write on the Ziploc bag. But get it in there, get it mixed in with all the rest of your things so that you'll see it and that you'll remember that you have it and then you'll actually use it. Plus, a little bit of that stuff goes a long way. So even if you just put a little two-by-two two Ziploc bag of glitter or whatever, you're going to have enough in that bag to do your whole project. And then when the bag is empty, then you can go back to your back stock area and refill that glitter or that embossing powder and put it back in your four-section system. Because if you're, just, if you're sitting there flipping through your sections and you, think, and you see it, then you're going to use it. I'll guarantee you, once you get into a four-section system and you start using it when you're crafting, anything that's not in your four-section system is going to be not used because it's so easy to put your hands on things in the four-section system that you'll just keep strapping along, not even thinking about what's not in there. So find a way to get it in there or a representation of it in there, and then you'll actually use it. Okay, so um, Jamie says, for ribbon I have a a huge glass jar and wrapped ribbon on mini popsicle sticks. Everyone thinks it's candy. It is pretty. It's eye candy. So a lot of those jar solutions are really pretty, and they're a great way to decorate your room. Now, I would suggest taking those popsicle sticks, if that's what you wrapped your ribbon around, and putting them right into your rainbow section, because you don't have to go anywhere to get to those ribbon popsicles, right? 
If you go to your blue section, there's your blue ribbon popsicle, and you're going to use it. You don't have to get up, open the jar, dig in the jar, find what you need, sit down at your desk, start unwrapping the ribbon, and realize there's not enough on there. So take those ribbon popsicles, if that's how you've wrapped your ribbon, and throw them right into your four-section system in whatever color or theme they belong in, and then you can um, actually use them, which is our, really our goal here. Mary Beth says, I have a sticker sheet that doesn't fit in a pocket of the sorting pages. Should I cut them apart and make them fit? I'm having trouble getting this stuff I have to fit in the predetermined sizes of the pages I already have, not the Scrapwreck brand. So I'm wondering um, if you're using <laughs> Crop and Style uh, brand pages, which um, are um, not as efficient as scrap rack brand pages. I wouldn't cut things apart if you didn't have to. Um, you can, but it takes a lot of time to do that. And if you have time and it works, then you could do it. But the other thing is you might want to consider maybe an 8.5 by 11 page protector might work. You know, just that big pocket, and then you could leave stuff kind of sticking out the top of it. I guess I'd have to see more of what you were trying to accomplish um, to get that done. But I think almost anything, as long as it's not... 12 by 12, you could put it in that 8.5 by 11 pocket and let it stick out the top. So that might be a solution for you as well. Diane says, ha, too late for the don't get overwhelmed idea. I just put my collection of pages and have my scrap rack in pieces because I had to rearrange it all. Um, Kim says, I missed last week and couldn't find the tape session on the website. Are you taping the boot camp series and posting them on the scrap rack site by any chance? Thanks so much. They are on the um, Scrap Rack site, but the best way to get to them is to go to www.organization. I'm going to send this out to everybody. Organizationbootcamp.com. And I know that doesn't say um, anywhere on there that it's um, the Scrap Rack website, but it is. It'll take you right to the Scrap Rack website. So if you just remember organizationbootcamp.com, you'll get there. And it's, there'll be a link in it also in the um, – email that I send out tomorrow, kind of a follow-up email. Do you think stickers will fit in the triple play page? No, but they do fit in the double extra long page. I know that for a fact. And we have lots of sticker, sticker users who use the double X. Um, and we're also doing a vertical double. So, and that will be a great page for stickers because they're six by 12 and because they're so thick. It'll be nice to be able to slide them down in. So in January, we should have the vertical doubles coming in. Angie says, is there any plans for 8.5 by 11 size scrap racks? I have everything stored with this size, but would love to be able to convert to using a scrap rack system one day. We probably will not make pages in the 8.5 by 11 format because uh, obviously um, a lot of scrapbook stuff is, is 12 inches long or 12 by 12 or whatever. But as long as what you're using is standard three-hole punch, Angie, you can buy a scrap rack base unit and just move everything um, that's a standard three-hole punch onto it. It doesn't matter if it's 12 by 12 or not. A lot of people use um, 8.5 by 11 stuff in their 12 by 12 scrap rack, and it's not a problem for the scrap rack to handle it at all. So I don't use it, um, obviously, because um, – because I have plenty of scrap rack at my fingertips, I guess. But any, that's the reason we designed the scrap rack in 8.5 by 11, because we knew that people had all these things that already existed in the world that were 8.5 by 11, and lots of templates are three-hole punched and all of those kind of things. So we wanted to create something that people could use with what they already had, what was already existing in the marketplace. So you can use a scrap rack with 8.5 by 11 pages on it with no problem, and 8.5 by 11 pages on it with no problem. So, um, and you can even, if you want to add some 12 by 12 pages in, you can add them right into it as well. It'll be fine. Christine says, I have a friend out of state that I boxed up and send things to that I find duplicates of or don't need. Otherwise, the yard sale boxes in the garage. Nice job. If you know where you're going to send your stuff, it makes it so easy. And I guess I didn't talk about last week, but we had somebody bring up in one of the earlier challenges that she actually gets a box from the post office, a um, priority mail box that, and that's bigger than 12 inches. I think it's 13 and a quarter or something, 13 and 5 eight, something like that. And that's what she uses for her purge box. And she just throws all her purge in there, and when the box gets full, 
she closes up the box, seals it up, and then she sends it off to wherever she sends it. I don't know, but she says it's really easy because as soon as that box is full, she just takes it to the post office and sends it. I think it goes to some charity, actually. But that's how she knows it's time to get rid of it when the box is full and the purge boxes are essentially free that way at the post office. So, um, Kim says, are you running any specials on products anytime soon or do you have coupons? We're not running any, we do have the boot camp special going on right now for this class, and that's on the boot camp page. Um, but also remember that uh, Black Friday is coming up in just another week, or a week from Friday, and that's free shipping day. So if you're in the United States, whatever you order on Black Friday is shipped for free, so you can really save some money, especially if you're, you know, we're in Washington State. So if you're in Florida or Atlanta or all the way across in New York or Pennsylvania or something, where shipping gets really expensive, um, that's free shipping day within the United States. If you're outside of the United States, um, you get 10% of whatever you purchase towards shipping. So if you buy something for $100, we'll pay 10% $10 of your shipping charges. And the way that works, if you're out of the country and you're listening, is you just place your order like normal, and then once um, Karen gets the order, she'll box it and weigh it, and then she'll email you and tell you what the shipping charges will be before she ever charges your card or whatever. So um, those charges will show up when you place the order, but before she processes your credit card, she'll change the, the shipping charges to reflect what's real. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. So some stuff we can send, some stuff we can get pretty close to free shipping into like Canada and stuff. So um, Leanne says, what size is the double extra long storage page? The double extra long is two long, long pockets, and they are 12 and a half inches long and six and a quarter inches deep each. Juan says, once I sort my paper and stickers into four groups, how do I know how many storage pages to buy? I guess I'm a god a lot. <laughs> um, so if you are, here's the thing about the pages. In most cases, especially when you're talking about the variety packs, most people, especially who are got a lot, have enough stuff to fill a 70-page variety pack. And the nice thing about the variety pack is you get to work with all of those pages, and then you can kind of figure out which ones you like the most and which types of products you have the most of. And then when you're ready to order your next pages, you've worked with all of those basic storage pages, so you know. The only one that's not in the variety pack is the Sweet 16 page, and that's the one with the 16 little two by two pockets on or so I guess I guess they're three by three pockets on the page that I used for the um, unmounted acrylic stamp. So the best way to do it is to order kind of the variety pack and work with those pages and then you need more pages, you know exactly which pages you like or don't like. And maybe depending on how much you have, you might need um, you might need a uh, double, you might need to order two of those, I guess. And there's a savings when you order the 70 page pack, you're paying 70 um, dollars, so a dollar a page. And when you buy them in the 10 page packs, you're buying a paying a dollar 20 page. So you save like 14 bucks when you buy the 70 page pack. Uh, Carla says, Tiffany, I'm loving this class. Is the embellishment page eight and a half by 11? The embellishment page is actually, let me click back here since we're talking about pages. The embellishment page is actually bigger than eight and a half by 11. Um, Oops, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? I need to pay more attention. Um, hang on, let me get there. I obviously can't click and talk at the same time. So the embellishment page, I think, is 9 by 11. Nine, it might be 9 by, I'm trying to remember now off the top of my head. It's narrower, I think it's 9 by 12. It's narrower than the other pages, but I think it's as tall as the other pages. And it was designed that way just because um, for weight issues, um, but which didn't ever turn out to be an issue. We've made that page for years and years, and no one's ever been able to weight it and break it. So um, we may see the next evolution of the embellishment page get as big as the other pages. Christine says, how many pages, how many pages of paper will the insert hold? You can put 25 sheets of paper in a super size single or in the side loader um, single pocket. And we don't recommend it just because it's hard to see 25 sheets of paper. But I put 10 sheets of paper in each of my pocket pages and then and I kind of fan them out a little bit. So I see a little bit of an edge. So I take five sheets and kind of fan them out and put them in 
facing forward and then five sheets and put them in facing back so when I turn the page I see what's on the other side. And I can't tell exactly what those other pages are unless it's solid color, then I can. But um, for like printed or patterned papers, then I can just see a little edge so I know it's back there and I have a good idea what it is. Um, Joanne is with us tonight. Hi, Joanna. Good to see you popping up. Diane Young is with us. Hi, Diane. She says, well, nice to see you at the CKC show. Where's the picture of you, me, and Donna? You know what, Diane, I tried to post a picture from CKC, and it went on my personal Facebook page. So it's on my list to repost it tonight, so or tomorrow, I guess. I might not get to it tonight. but um, So you should see it pop up on Facebook either tonight or tomorrow. As soon as I do the download for the class, I'm going to try and get it up there. Jennifer says, I've been able to incorporate my creative memory pages into the scrap rack system. That's perfect, Jennifer. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons we did the standard three-hole. So anything that you've got that is three-hole punch or could be three-hole punch should work, should work right into your scrap rack system. Freda says, since I am just starting out, I decided to get a printer that handles 12 by 12 paper instead of stockpiling. I'm going to print as I go. I think that is a great idea. Oh, it's nice to be just starting out and be able to make all those choices when we have so many options. Wendy says, last week I missed the beginning of Challenge 1, and you were going to email us the video so I could look at it. Thanks, Wendy in Bristol. Yeah, I did send an email out last week, so if you did not get the email, you might check your junk, your spam folder, because the email list comes directly off the list that I use, that, that we use for the webinar. So um, if you got the webinar email, which you obviously have to if you've joined us, I guess, um, then I know we have your correct email address, but we may be blocked by your spam blocker. If you don't, if again, you can just go to www.organizationbootcamp.com and scroll down the page, and you can find the video there as well. But So if you didn't get the video, if you didn't get the link, or you didn't get the email last week with kind of the details on it from the class and the link back, um, it may be in your spam folder. It may not be making it through. But if you got the link to join us, then we have your correct email address. So it should, the other one should have made it through as well. Um, and Fred also says, I decided that a quarter regular sheet, which four and a half by five and a half, will be my smallest size. So setting goals, there we go, for what you're going to keep for scraps or whatever is the best way to go and throw away whatever doesn't meet your minimum at the end. So way to go, Frida. Anna says, can't wait for the new pages in January. Thank you for helping us get organized. You're so welcome. I love helping people get organized and I'm so excited. You know, I'm just sitting on my hands because there's one paper that's coming out in January that I can't even talk about yet, but hopefully um, by December 1 we'll have a good sample. I can do pictures. We'll even be able to pre-order it. Um, early in December also. But you're going to love it, or I love it. I hope you love it, because I love it. Ken says, if your example is two base units, can you tell me what the difference is between two base units and one with an expansion? Thanks so much. Oh, sorry, that's just, uh, um, that's just semantics. It is, when I say two base units, it is a basic, a single base, and two wings, and an expansion base. So that is, they're the same thing. I'm sorry, I wasn't very clear on that. So. Yes, there are two bases and then a basic, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, I guess let me just kind of scoot back here again then. So I guess we have a picture here. So when you look at this scrap rack, it has, it's got two base units hooked together and two wings, one on either end. So when you buy a scrap rack, you start with a basic, which is a single base and two wings. And then when you add an expansion, you don't need any more wings. You just take one wing off, hook the two base units together in the middle of the wing holes where the wing holes are joined, and move the wing to the outside. And that gives you the double base. So I'm sorry, Kim, for the confusion. That is, in fact, what you're looking at right here, a basic and an expansion base. Um, Donna says, my scrap rack pages are really sagging at bottom corners and hanging down below other pages. Are they too heavy, overloaded? I have many pages with small baggies of buttons, et cetera, in them. So there's a couple of things that cause page that. So this scrap rack that you're looking at in the picture, you can see that the page that it's open to, the pages come down a little bit in the corner there where the Big Ben embellishment is, right? But the rest of the pages aren't really sagging, and that's for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's lots of stuff in there. 
So, well, first of all, the number one reason people's pages sag is because their scrap rack is set up on its back. So if you look at your scrap rack and at the back and you see this solid metal piece that um, has the embossing, embossed with the scraprack.com, that means you do have your scrap rack set up correctly. But if when you look at your scrap rack base from the back, you see the hinge mechanism that holds it up, then you have it set up on its back and you need to take your spinders off and tip it over. And so if that's the problem, then you're going to solve a lot of page tag right there. But then the next thing is um, you want to load your heavier, bulkier things closer to the spinder rather than on the outside corners, those little Ziploc bags, if you keep them towards the inside and put the lighter weight stickers or embellishments and stuff on the outside, that's going to be better. But um, you need to make sure that you have dividers in there because dividers act like um, the covers of a book as well as protecting the edges and corners of your pages. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is that where the placement of your spinder. So if you think of the spinders as the spine of a book, if you take a big thick book and you pull out a big chunk of pages so you, you know, all the way down to the spine, well, the spine is no longer stable, right? It's, the book is now wonky. And literally when you close it, you can make it kind of angled so the pages hang down. Well, that's the same thing with the spinders on your scrap rack. So you want to think of them as the spine of your book. So start with the spinder in the center and build out and put those spinders close together so that the spinders are all working together like the back of your book to hold your pages, excuse me, close together so that you don't have the page tag. So you need to make sure you have dividers, load the heavier stuff closer to the inside on the pages, but mostly make sure your rack is set up properly and that your spinders are close together. Now, when you're first putting your scrap rack together and you don't have a lot of stuff in it, there's a far greater chance you're going to get page tag. So the scrap rack really works best when it's loaded up. So don't worry about overloading it. Worry about underloading it. All right, I hope I answered your question and maybe that question of others as well. Um, Sarah says, this might be a little off topic, but can you tell me if you can buy the Velcro to hold two racks together separately? I have the metal one, and I hate it. If you think it's too off topic, I can email you later. Um, and don't answer me. Yes, you don't have to buy it, Sarah. You can just email customer service at the scraprack.com and say, please send me a Velcro connector. I have the metal one, and I hate it. And we'll put one in the in a regular envelope and stick a stamp on it and get it out the door to you. So, yeah, if you want to swap. The metal ones work best if you bend them. And the problem with bending them um, on the back of your base unit is that then it's difficult to take the base units apart if you like to take a base with you when you go to a crop or whatever. So, um, but the Velcro ones are not a problem, and we have them at the warehouse, so just send an email to customer service and request one. And Joanna, who's online with us tonight, will um, get it sent off to Karen, and she will get it in the mail to you. Leah says, I have military and patriotic in my theme section. I frequently use patriotic stuff on my military pages, but usually do not use military on a patriotic page. Should I store these themes together or separate? I say together, um, because you already think of them together, right? So you use patriotic stuff on your military pages, so they're already connected in your mind. And so you know that's where to go for stuff. So if you were doing something and you needed military, you would think patriotic. And patriotic, you would think military and vice versa. And really, the goal is putting these things where, that, where you'll use them. And again, you might be thinking patriotic and go there and see something on a military sticker sheet or military embellishment or whatever that would also work on patriotic. And you could go back and forth. So I'd say leave them just how you have them together. and. Um, and then just choose to do them either as military or as patriotic. Um, Freda says, I even ran four and a half by five and a half sample of each of my embossing folders, then number the embossing sample page and it's put in a matching folder so that I can retrieve them easily. Good job, Freda. We're going to talk about that exact thing next week. So you are ahead of the game. But the important thing here is you when you come across something that you have in your scrapbook supplies or your craft supplies, think about it like Freda did. How am I going to remember I have this? Where am I going to find it and how am I going to find it? So she made examples of her embossing folders, and then she could put those examples. If there was one that was Christmas, she could put an example of it in Christmas, 
number the sample and number the embossing folder, and then the sample, when she was working on Christmas, would drive her right back to the embossing folder. And that's our goal. Our goal is to think that way, as Fred is thinking, how can I incorporate this into my four-section system so that it'll pop up and I can use it? So think about um, incorporating that thing or representation of that thing into your four-section system. So like I said, you, it'll pop up and you can use it. So I hope that makes sense to all of you. Okay, good job, Fred. Kudos for you. Extra stars for you. Francie Flossa's name is popping up here. Hi, Francie. It's good to see your name. Francie says, for the embossing powder, you can emboss a small piece of paper with each color and put that in the scrap rack with a note of exactly where the color is stored. So, again, another great idea. And we saw some examples of something similar to this with stickles. And um, when we talked about color, which we're not going to talk about in this short series, but we will talk about in the January series. But Francie's absolutely right. Get an example of it in your scrap rack. Um, or in your four-section system so that you at least remember that you have it, and then you can go back and know where it is and actually use it. Rhonda says, thank you, yes, that was the pic I referenced, the photo of your craft area. How and where do you store tools, knives, scissors, rulers, et cetera? Um, boy, we don't really have that much time to get into tool storage, but if you go to the website, there's a picture of my room, and it kind of goes through it. Well, I can actually... I'll show you where the article is. Let's see. Let me get here. We'll go there now. We'll check it out right now. So let's see. Um, so this is organizationbootcamp.com. But if you go over to this side of the, to the right side of the screen, you'll see this little picture of my room. And you can click on that picture. And it will take you through the whole process of the room, what I did, why I did it, how I made the room smaller and more accessible. And so here are the different places that I store tools. I have this little cart in the center picture that rolls under my desk. And the beautiful thing about stuff on wheels, hallelujah, if you're designing a room, don't put any permanent cabinets in it, I beg you. Buy really heavy duty casters and put your cabinetry or whatever you're gonna do on wheels because once you live in that room for a while, you'll come up with these great ideas about how you'd like to have things reconfigured. And if you can move stuff around, you can do it. So wheels are huge for me. So in this little picture, this little cart is on wheels, and it has a lot of different tools and adhesives in it, some inks and some chalks and some basic stuff like that. I don't know if there's a, a – um, so you can see um, – there's some stuff in there. This is when I was first putting the room together, so I had empty little baskets. None of the baskets are empty anymore. But you can see I just hung my paper trimmer off a purse hanger. You know those little things, purse hangers that you keep in your purse, and if you go to a restaurant or something, you can hang your bag so you don't have to set it on the ground. Well, I just used one of those in my paper trimmer, and I hang it off the edge of my desk, and then it doesn't get buried under paper and stuff, so that makes it really easy. You can see I have a giant T-square, and that just slides between the rails that hold the glass up on my desk um, and the glass top of it, so that it's right there at my fingertips as well. And then there's some other different tool storage things over here, so you can see this little flower basket, this little cart of flower pots over on the right side. My goal is to always start with an empty desk when I start crafting. There's nothing on my desk. Right, so you can see that's me there in the bottom corner. So you can see my desk starts off empty, and then I bring to the desk whatever I'm going to work with. So if I'm going to use something that's in one of these little pots, I take the pot, and I bring it to the desk, and I use what's in it, and I put it back in the pot, and I put the pot back where it belongs. And so it makes it really easy to keep my desk from getting cluttered. It's easy to put things away. It's easy to use things. I know exactly where they go. So I bring things to the desk, I use them, and then I'm able to put them back. That's one of the nice things about the basket strategy and the little rolling cart as well. I can pull things out of the basket, out of the rolling cart, pull the basket out of whatever I want to use, use what's in it, put, what, put it back when I'm done, and then put it back on the cart. So those strategies, when you're thinking about your tools and those kind of things, how can I bring these out when I need them quickly and easily and then still be able to put them back? And I will give you a little inside line. I'm working on a really, really cool um, tool storage thing that's kind of a multi-function thing. So um, you may see that in the middle of next year. Ooh, you guys already get, you're getting all the good info out of me. I'm not supposed to be talking about stuff like that, but I get so excited. I can barely, I can barely um, control myself. So 
there are my my suggestions for tools for the moment. Okay, let's see. All right. Um, I lost my place here on my list of questions, so bear with me for a second. Um, so we talked about Sarah and her attacher. Okay, Terry says, for the embossing powder, why not emboss a small square and file an appropriate color section? Great minds think alike, Terry and Francie. I'm going to keep mine in a box that is numbered, so I'll write them the box number on the sample so I know where it is kept. So good job. Great way to cross-reference. And so if you are writing, you know, the number of the box, if you have boxes that you're numbering with those embossing powders or that glitter or whatever, so you might have a number on the jar and a number on the box, so that would make your sample would be, you know, box B2-47 or whatever it is. So you can easily find that exact color of embossing powder or glitter or whatever without having to pull it up and look at it one at a time. Good job, Terry. Kathy says, if you have your florals stored with florals and you're doing a layout and want to add something but don't know what, how do you get to the floral section, especially if the rest of your layout is striped or something not necessarily screaming floral? My florals are in the rainbow section, and they're grouped by most dominant color. So if I had was working on a layout and I had stripes or dots or solid colors and I was thinking, I need to, this, I could really go for some floral on this, and it would be great if it had pink in it, then I can just go to the pink section and thumb through the back of pink, and then the pink florals are back there behind the solid colored paper. So it might be, rather than having a floral section, it might be better if you put your florals by major color group. Now, if you're absolutely set on keeping a floral section, then put your florals in, again, by color so that you have pinks and blues and greens and yellows as the dominant color. Um, grouped together that way, and then you'll see things that work well together. The nice thing about using a paper storage box, I know we're out of the cardboard ones, we do have the plastic ones on the website, but the nice thing about using a paper storage box is you literally can take your thumb and kind of fan through and see a lot of papers really quickly and easily. Um, so that's kind of the upside to the paper storage box if you're a paper junkie and you have a lot of those kind of things, those kind of patterns of paper. How do you store the pieces, oh, this is from Therese. How do you store the pieces of your in-progress projects? Ooh, I use um, a super size single. Or you could also use a project planner. So I guess it depends how far along you are. So if you haven't actually started the layout yet, but you're just gathering things together that you know are going to work for that, then you could use the project planner page. And so... Um, and I also know that some of you work with Creative Memories, and they have some kind of sorting box that works in a similar way. So this page right here in the bottom left corner of the project planner has a 12 by 12 pocket on the back, has a long 12 by 6 pocket on the front, a small 4 by 6 pocket on the front, and then an 8 by 6 pocket. So with those three pockets, you would put your embellishments, your journaling notes, your photos, all that kind of stuff, and then you would put your um, paper in the back. Now, if it's just something where you've cut out the pieces and you have the pictures and it's kind of ready to go, then I would just use a super size single and drop it all into that in the moment to keep it all together. Um, so project planner for more. I haven't started it. I have all the pieces here. A super size single pocket more for um, while the pieces are cut out and ready to go, I just kind of need to put it together. So depending on the phase of the project, I would use one or the other. Kathy says... I'm finding the scrap art pages are not the right size for a lot of my alphas. I haven't figured out what to do yet. So, um, so Kathy, I don't know exactly what um, sizes of alphabet stickers you're using or stickers you're using or whatever it is, but um, if you can share with me maybe the brands, I'll take a look at them. And if we don't have a pocket that fits for them, I would love to make sure we do in the future. So those kind of challenges are great for me to hear about because then I can actually go in and um, get something that's working with what other manufacturers are doing in the industry. The other thing is, I'm going to go back to our website, that if you go, let's see. Let me see if I can remember where it is. I think it's on the Pages page here. Um, I'm going to look here in pages. 
There's a thing called the Hot Craft Tool. We're out of stock on them right now, but they're going to be back by the end of the week, I think. They're due back in stock. Maybe it's under accessories. Let me take another look. But you can customize your oh, cool tool. I guess that's where it is. You can customize your pages using a hot, the Hot Craft Tool. Um, hmm. I don't see it there either. That's kind of odd. Let me see. Oh, you know what? It's probably out of stock, so it's not showing up. That is probably the problem. Either that or it's behind my thing. But there is a tool that's called the Hot Craft Tool, and you can use it to actually modify. So you could modify the super size single pocket. So if you had, maybe you're talking about you have a sticker that's 8 inches wide and 12 inches long, you could modify that super size single by like creating a seam, and then that would give you an 8 inch pocket and a 4 inch pocket. So that might be more what you need. So, but if you can email me with some of the brands or whatever that you're challenged with, I'd love to take a look at them because if there is stuff out there that we're not accommodating, we definitely want to make sure we are. Rhonda says, what about color-coordinated kits? I bought a pad of paper that had a package of matching ribbons, matching buttons, ribbon, and chipboard. Do I break it all up or have a separate section for kits? Thanks, Rhonda. I wouldn't break it up. I would keep it all together. Um, but when you say a pad of paper, I'm wondering if that's like 10 sheets of paper, and then you could put the paper in a super size single and then all the accessories that go with it in another page and put them together in whatever section they would belong in, or if it's like a stack of like 50 sheets of paper, in which case you're going to need to put the embellishments in whatever category that um, that kit goes in and then put a note about where the paper is. So we kind of talked a little bit about that in the first um, session about storing those kits in stacks. So you may need to refer back to that a little bit or maybe give me a little bit more information and I could address it a little bit further. Um, Kathy says, how much does your scrap rack weigh? It weighs a lot. <laughs> I don't know how much it weighs, actually. Um, I think a fully loaded scrap rack with seven binders and 210 pages and, you know, 20 dividers or something can get upwards of 30 or 40 pounds. Um, but I'm not sure how much it weighs, actually. I haven't, I, ha I haven't weighed it for a long time. Um, Joanna says, what? The vertical page coming in January. Yes, it is. Joanna. Joanna was one of the people who recommended the vertical page on our new products list, our new products group on Facebook. Mary Beth says, so do you put all your paper in the scrap rack or do you sort into paper boxes with dividers? I have some of each. So um, if you, I have the rainbow section in paper storage boxes, but I have most of my themed paper right in the scrap rack. And so I am not, I am probably the only scrapbooker I know actually who is not a paper junkie. Um, so I mostly, like if I, I don't have 100 sheets of ballet paper, I might have 10. I don't have 50 sheets of Disney paper, I probably have 30. So when you're talking about those amounts of paper in those categories, they're going to fit right into your scrap rack. But I do know people who have 500 sheets of Disney paper or pe people who have, you know, um, I don't know, uh, you know, two feet of rainbow paper or whatever. So it, I would recommend using a combination of paper storage boxes and um, putting paper in your scrap rack. So smaller things of paper are going to go in the scrap rack where you just have, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 sheets that fit that theme. Bigger themes of paper are going to go. Um, so if I was going to, here's what I have a lot of. I have a ton of travel paper, right? That's my passion is traveling. So I buy all the travel paper I see almost. But I tend to keep it in the tra it, it is in the tra it's not that I tend to. It is in the travel section. But I have enough travel paper that I could pull it all out of the travel section and put it in the paper storage boxes. Now I also buy the stickers and the embellishments and all the other stuff that usually goes with the paper. So I like to keep my paper in the 12 by 12 and then right in front of that in the travel section I'm going to have one of the smaller pocket pages that has all the ribbons and ads and embellishments that go with that themed paper. So I, I wouldn't actually take it out because I like to have the two things together. But and some people might have five, six hundred sheets of Christmas paper and it doesn't necessarily match with particular embellishments. And so then putting it in a paper storage box is a smarter way to go. Um, 
sports paper, I might have 10 or 15 sheets of paper for each sport that my kids are involved in. So I don't have hundreds of sheets of sports paper either. So it just depends how big of a paper junkie you are. But for most people, the best thing to do is a little bit of a combination. So if you have 25 sheets or less, put it in your scrap rack. If you have more than 25 sheets of paper, then it might take a section in your paper storage box. And then the two just will link back together. Um, Tina says, are you all going to be having a Black Friday sale? Free shipping day. Two free shipping days a year at the Scrap Rack. One is Black Friday, and the other is National Scrap Rack Day. And it's for 24 hours in a specific time. So from 12.01 a.m. Pacific time until 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, we have free shipping um, within the United States on that day. Sheila says, time for me to go. Thanks for all you do. I'll listen to the question and answer part tomorrow. Um, Sally says, I put both 8.5 by 11 and 12 by 12 pages in my scrap rack, and it works very well. So, yeah, good job, Sally. It really does. I mean, there's no, um, no real problem. Angie says, thank you for answering, Tiffany. I did not think about that with the three-hole punch system. Now I can get a scrap rack for Christmas and still use it with 8.5 by 11 pages. Yay! I'm so excited. I really didn't want to redo it all. No need to redo it. If you've got something that's working, Angie, just get someone who loves you to buy you a scrap rack basic and throw all the pages you already have right into it. It'll work out great. And remember, if someone's going to buy it for you for Christmas, they can get free shipping on it on Black Friday. Melanie says, I've added eight and a half by 11 pages, page protectors to my holding album mixed in as needed among my 12 by 12 pages and hold eight and a half by 11 papers and memorabilia. Perfect, a perfect use for that as well. So here's a nice thing about 8.5 by 11. Obviously, it holds standard papers, flyers, brochures, that kind of stuff. And they're not niche market, which means you can get 100 8.5 by 11 page protectors for 10 bucks. So if you're using a lot of smaller stuff like that, those 8.5 by 11 page protectors are going to work great, especially in the situation that Melanie's describing where she's got them right in her holding album. So thanks for sharing that with us, Melanie. Will free shipping be available for Hawaii? Yes, ma'am. And you are in the United States. Marilyn says, is there a code for the discount given for the boot camp challenge? No, it's just on there. There's just one special package. It's at the bottom of the boot camp page. So um, if you just scroll down the organizationbootcamp.com page, um, you will uh, see what the special is for boot camp. Julie, Jamie asks, are your products in any stores or only available to order online? They are in some stores. We do not have a huge uh, local scrapbook store following. However, um, it's really easy for local scrapbook stores to order wholesale from us. So if you have a local store that you love and they want to order it for you, and that way you can support them a little bit, um, it's really easy for local stores to set up their wholesale account with us. And so if you want to get it through your store, we can make that happen. Alice says, I have a scrap rack from several years ago, and it is full but not organized. Should I pull everything out of it in order to start organizing? I wouldn't say pull everything out, Alice. I would say maybe take two, the first two spinders and empty those out and call that your organized only space. And then to start with those first two spinders, and then you know once you get the stuff that was in those two organized then pull off that third one and start from there and just start working through it a little bit at a time so that you don't overwhelm yourself or end up with big piles of messiness as you go along but um, again just um, just set it just work through it a little bit at a time so pull two or three spinders off and you know use those to be your organized only space and then just work your way back in Kim says, I found that sorting worked really well if I sorted in the large two gallons of black bags and labeled them with washi tape. I stood the bags upright in the box until uh, it filled and then added the sorted stuff from the bags into my scrap rack and then repeat. I'm not finished yet, but I was actually successful when I sorted this way. I'm a god a lot, so it takes me a while. These sessions are definitely helpful in getting there. Good luck. So Kim's absolutely right. So uh, an option to using sorting templates. Um, she's using Ziploc bags, and the nice thing about using Ziploc bags is that it sort of contains everything, right, while you're working your way through, and then she just relabels the bags and keeps going. So a great suggestion, Kim, and it does also kind of keep everything neat and in a smaller space. So. Dorothy says, what is the footprint on the storage rack? My space is at a premium. 
the footprint is um, 15 by 12. So it's 15 inches long and 12 inches deep. The wings overhang 11 inches, but they don't need to be on tabletop. So even if you just use something small like a TV tray, it's going to fit on a TV tray with no problem. It also fits on the lid of a tote. So if you've seen on the website the tote that we use from Office Depot for going to crops and stuff, it'll sit right on the lid of that tote. And the nice thing about the tote is if you don't have a lot of room or you need to put things all the way away, you can take all the binders off your scrap rack, stand it up in the tote, fold the base unit totally flat. It's only about a half an inch thick when you fold it flat. Put the wings and the base unit in the tote with your binders loaded with stuff. And when you're ready to scrapbook again, you just pull out the base, pop it up, take everything out of the tote, put the lid back on, scrap rack goes on the lid, binders back on the scrap rack, and everything's ready to go. That also puts it right next to you at chair height, which is wonderful if you're um, if you work in a regular chair as opposed to a stool. Angela asks, are those recorded videos from a previous set of classes? The latest one posted is from October 30th. So would I need to look at the September 11th? video to the elastic challenge. No, I mean, the, over here, the 2012 Back to School, Back to Scrapping Challenge, that's going to be the last eight class series that we did. So you're welcome to watch any of those. And they're broken down into smaller bits of information that we stretched out over eight weeks. If you want to see the organization boot camp um, um, video that we did, you just need to go to organizationbootcamp.com. And that's going to bring up this screen. And if you just scroll down past the invitation, there's the first week's video right there. So you can watch that there. But you're welcome to watch the old challenge ones as well. Um, Jennifer asks, uh, she, is it possible to get the part that joins the bases? I bought a base from a friend that I don't have. So hopefully you heard my message before you left. It says that she's left. But yes, you can get one of those. Just call the office or email Joanna. Kim says, okay, good. Thanks for clarifying on the unit. So now how long will my order be saved? I'm definitely going to need the free shipping. I don't, I think it saves at least 30 days if you're putting a shopping cart together. I'm pretty sure um, when you save your shopping cart or send the shopping cart or whatever it says, I think it lasts for 30 days. So, um, Bonnie says, do you zigzag the spindles on the base rack? Yes. And um, zigzag is kind of a big word, but they're, yes, they are staggered. So they're next to each other. Um, the rings are, are above each other, and then the next one over, below, above, below, above, below. But not by a great amount, just like right above and right below. And they're all sort of centered on the base unit. Um, Kathy says, my outfits are mid-size. They're like 5 by 7 or some peculiar size from CM years ago. Um, you might try, Kathy, the 5 by 7 page is new for us, the Fantastic Five. So if you don't have the Fantastic Five, that may, might solve your problem, actually. And now that you say that, I'm thinking back to those stickers. I don't have any more of them, but I know exactly what you're talking about. And they may work in that um, 5 by 7, the Fantastic Five, because it's like 5 and a half by 7 and a half. the pockets actually are. So, or 500 by 7 and a quarter, something like that. So, 5 by 7 doesn't fit in there. So, actually, if you get a chance to physically measure those stickers, that would answer that question. But the Fantastic Five page, which is one of our newest pages, um, might solve that dilemma, too. Melanie says, isn't that uh, hot craft tool in the cool tools and more great stuff tab? Um, I don't know. Maybe it is. I, I thought I had clicked on that, but I think you're right. Let's see. So here it is, cool tools and more great stuff. It might not be showing up because they're out of stock right now, um, but they'll be back at the end of the week. So that's probably why it's not popping up, and then you'll be able to see it. I'll put a link to it um, in the email so you all can see what we're talking about at least. Okay, let's see. Ah, so Kathy says, okay, create a memory score in 7 eighths by 6 and a quarter, and a brand called Simple Sets, which is 5 and a half by 9. Somehow I have a ton of these silly sizes. So the CM ones are definitely going to fit in the 5x7 pockets, the new, that new page. And the 5.5 by 9, probably the only solution I have for you would be to use the double extra long. But if you were using that hot tool, you could put, make a line and then you'd have, because it's 6 by 12, you'd have a little pocket at the end there that was going to be 3 by 6 
probably a pretty useful little size. The other thing you can do also, um, Kathy, is instead of using the hot tool, you can just use adhesive. So if you go into the double extra long pocket and just put a bead of adhesive at like nine and a half inches and then stick it down, then you will have created two pockets for yourself anyway. You don't have to use the hot tool, but the hot tool is a lot of fun. Cheryl says, how can I organize the paper packs that are adhered together? They usually come in various colors, patterns, and textures. So it kind of depends what they are. So if they're sometimes, like I think I said a couple of examples, one was all seasons and one was all sports, um, and sometimes they are just colors. Just stand them up in front of the rainbow section or at the end of the rainbow section with your paper storage boxes so that you see them. Don't lay them flat on a shelf and stack them up on a shelf where you have to fight to pull them out of the middle or pull them off the bottom. You want to tip them up, stand them on their edge so that you can at least thumb through them and see all the papers that are in there and see if it's going to work for you. And I would just stand it up right at the beginning of my rainbow section and then you can thumb through it easily and see if it's going to um, work for what you need. And I think there's some pictures of that if you go back to the, either the first video or the 2012 Back to School, Back to Scrapping paper video, there's pictures of that scenario in that video as well. Um, the boot camp special isn't listed on the Canadian website. Is it possible to get it from here instead of, uh, you know, um, scrapback.ca is just a retailer for us. So I don't know that they're going to do the boot camp special or that they would honor the boot camp special. Um, so I can send them an email and see if they're interested in doing that. Or um, if you shop their site, if you want to send them an email and say, hey, the scrap rack has the boot camp special um, right now. Maybe they'll honor the price on it that um, that we're offering it for. And definitely, um, but I can definitely send the owner an email and say, hey, we're doing this and see if he's interested in honoring it as well. It's kind of a weird situation because they're not really us. They're just like a regular retail store and they just do a great job and they try to keep everything that we have in, in stock so that you guys don't have to cross order even the cool tools kind of stuff. So she, Susie, Susan says, I'm having trouble finding a crop rack with a lid looked at two Home Depots and online. Can you give me a link on your site or organization site? I did by the crop crate. So I believe, let's see here. Let's, let's go to accessories, crop crate, apron. I think there's a link right here. Let's see if it's so there's the Office Depot. For some reason, my pictures aren't loading here. Let's see. Let's go this way and see. Dun, dun, dun. See if I can find it. There we go. And does it have a? No. Oh, let's see. Sorry, as I'm going through here, those pictures are loading really slow. Office Depot SKU is nine eight seven three zero four. When you go in and ask for it, so there it is, um, right there, 987304. So if you search it on the Office Depot website, it's not called a crop crate. I should make that more clear. It's called the Office Depot brand mobile filing cart with lid. <laughs> so if you go in and ask for the crop crate or whatever, they have no idea what they're talk what, what you're talking about. But this is it, um, SKU 987304. So you should be able to find it on their website. Or you can go from, you know, if you just click on any one of the colored um, on the tote colors, it will take you to this page with all the apron details. I don't know why those pictures aren't loading, but um, there's the tote right there and kind of what it looks like with all the scrap rack loaded into it and all that stuff. Um, and then this thing in purple that says the Office Depot SKU is, is actually a link to Office Depot, so that will help. Sorry for the confusion on that. Alice says, would you put journaling tags in the alphanumeric section or by color in the rainbow section? When you say journaling tags, if you're just talking about a solid colored tag with lines on it that you're going to write on it, I would put it in the color section because that's most likely um, where you're going to find it. You know, you're going to think, oh, I need to add a red tag or, oh, I need to add a red block here to journal on. You're going to go to red and then it's going to pop up for you. Um, as far as what I would put in the front, section alphanumeric about journaling would be more like um, I have some unmounted journaling stamps where there are the lines, like one of them looks like a newspaper with the lines on it. And there's a couple other ones of things that just have lines on them. 
So I put those up there because they're very generic, but they're not in, on any color. And then I have some other journaling templates, and I have a journaling ruler, and those are all up there. So really generic journaling could be used on any page. Doesn't have any color in that for in that first alphanumeric section. But if I actually had a red tag with journaling lines printed on it, it would be in red unless it fit some specific theme, like it was a Christmas tag or whatever. And then it would be in with the theme. So. All right, it looks like that last question from Alice about journaling is our last question. So hopefully you guys are ready to take on the week, get all those embellishments, all that bulky stuff, tackle that obstacle course of ribbons and fiber, don't get too tangled up, don't get overwhelmed, so you don't get frustrated. And um, so get busy. Don't forget to put up your post so that somebody can win a prize next week. So. With that said, I'm going to sign off for the night, so everybody have a great week, and I will, oh, wait a minute, change this question, one more question. What about things that don't have a theme? Did you not get my question? Oh, I don't, I did, maybe didn't get your question. So Jane says, what about things that don't have theme? Then they've got to be color, right? So if they don't have a theme, they've got to be a color, so put them in your rainbow section. Now, um, if you bought with intention, like you might have bought pink floral paper, thinking about it as ballet, or a pink floral kit, but you thought this is perfect for ballet, then you want to put it in ballet. But if you just bought it because it was pretty and pink, then it's going to go in your pink section. And if you have a packet or something, um, let's see. Oh, okay, so here's more clear. Flares, packets, background stamps. So great, great clarification. Thank you. So you might have a section in your themes that's just called shapes. So my shape section has flourishes and chevrons and all swirly things, and they're just in the shape section. So that's where my stamps are. That's where the examples of um, uh, spell binders would be. Anything that's swirly or flourishy is going to be all grouped together in swirls and flourishes, including examples of my stamps that are swirly and flourishy. And the same thing with background stamps. So you might end up, depending on how crazy the stamper you are and how many background stamps you have, you could easily end up with a whole section that's in your themes A to Z that's just called background, where you put all those background stamps together. And with the background stamps, you're probably also going to then have examples of your embossing folders, which are backgrounds as well. So you have background stamps and background embossing folders and other things that might come up um, where you have background templates, the templates that you spray over or that you ink over to create a totally different background. So all of those things that are just going to create background um, designs are going to be all kept together, whether it's a stamp or a template or an embossing folder. You're going to see all of those things in one place. So thank you for the clarification, and I hope that makes sense. Um, and um, Francie says, thanks for doing this. I really enjoy it. I'm so glad. It's good to see your name pop up there, Francie, a longtime Scrap Rack customer. And Jane Updegraff says, thank you. And you're so welcome. Thank you for clarifying. I'm sorry I missed that earlier. So, all right, everybody, have a great week. Have a productive week. Um, I talked briefly about the blog. If you are in need of just a little bit of help getting organized for the holiday season, um, if you go to this blog here on our website, Tiffany's blog, I am doing tiny tasks, big results, 30 days of little things you can do to get yourself organized and make the holidays less stressful. So we talked today about making room for the new, and yesterday we talked about um, just getting started with organization and the first steps you can take to simplify. And those are all things that are posted on the blog. So if you need a little help there, I hope you'll join me. Um, with a blog post on that. All right, everybody, have a great week, and we will, I'll talk to you next.